If you're writing code for expert advisors, then you should be thinking about what happens if the terminal restarts. There can be any number of reasons a terminal restarts. There may be an operating system update that causes the system to restart, a simple power failure, or even just changing the input variables on your expert advisor will cause it to restart. So you need to think about whether there is information that you have in memory that you want to be reusing when on that restart. Is there something you need to know that you're tracking? So this is just an example of how I often do this. Uh, the easiest way is to use global variables built into MetaTrader. So I'll show you how I use global variables to store information. If you don't know what global variables are, I'm here in the MetaTrader terminal. If I go to tools and global variables, this is a list of the global variables that have been set. I have none here at the moment. Uh, each one has a name that must be unique because that's how the global variable is identified and a value. These values are doubles, uh, which means you can store any numeric value, including booleans, date, times, and enums. Uh, and then there's a time when that uh, global variable was set. MetaTrader will take care of deleting these if they're not used for some time. So you don't need to worry about filling this up over time by creating more and more of them. If they stop being used, MetaTrader will get rid of them. Just close that and I'll go back to the editor. So remembering that the global variable has a name that must be unique, first thing to think about is what will make those names unique for you. Now, obviously there's a name for the piece of information. And for my example, I'm going to store something like uh, last trade open price. So the global variable has a name and I'm going to refer to that as the key for my global variable. But then that's not enough because if I'm running more than one expert advisor or if I'm running the same on multiple symbols, then I could easily be using that same name multiple times. So what makes the trades on an expert advisor unique? Uh, it's obviously the magic number. But if I'm running the same expert advisor on two different symbols, I may be using the same magic number. So there would be the symbol then. That normally in your account will make every trade identifiable to that expert advisor. So that should be enough. But some people will run multiple accounts inside MetaTrader and those global variables are not reset each time you change account. Now, I don't think you should be using multiple accounts inside one instance of MetaTrader. You should always set up a separate MetaTrader installation for each of your accounts. But if you are going to do it, then we'll add one more thing to the information to make these names unique, and that will be the account number. Now, these first three, the account, symbol, and magic number, generally don't change while your expert advisor is running. So I'm going to refer to these in combination as the master key. So by combining these two pieces of information, the master key and the key, I should be able to come up with a unique name that I can use to identify my global variables. So now we need a function to store those global variables. And there is an existing function. I'm just going to wrap that in my own function to make it easier to set these master key and key values. So here's my wrapper function, which I'm just calling set gvar. I'm taking in the master key. So you'd set that once inside the expert advisor and call this function with the master key each time. The key for that individual piece of data, the value that I'm passing in, and then I'm allowing a key separator to be passed in. I'm just defaulting that to an underscore, and that's what I'll use to join the master key and with the key. So you can see here, global variable key is just master key plus the separator plus the key. And then setting the global variable is as simple as calling the global variable set method, passing the key and the value. And this function will return the date time. So you remember that last column of the global variables was the time that the global variable is set. So this function will return that time when the global variable was set. And I'm just returning that from my wrapper function. So that's what you would be doing to save the information. And I would say, save this information every time it changes. Don't wait until you are exiting the expert advisor because if it's a failure for something like a power failure, 
then you won't get an opportunity to save this information. So you should build this into your routines and save to global variables every time you update a piece of information that you want to save. So now I've added in my function to get the values back. And you would probably call this when your expert advisor is starting up to reload all of that information. Same arguments here, the master key, the key, I'm still passing in a value, but in this case, it's the default value. Because if you're calling this and these values haven't been set previously, you need to know what's coming back so that you understand that they haven't been set and you're not just getting a default set by the system. Uh, and I'm defaulting my value to zero. You might find it better to set that to something like minus one. Uh, and again, a key separator defaulting to an underscore. And I'll also mention that in my code, I will typically separate the sections of the master key, this account number, symbol, and magic. I'll use the same separator there, but you may want to do something different. So first thing here, again, I'm setting the global variable key, the same function, master key plus separator plus key. And then I'm checking if the global variable exists. So this global variable check function will check to see if that global variable exists. If that does exist, then I'm going to retrieve it using the global variable set function. And if it doesn't, then I'm using the default value. So what I'm saying here is result is equal to either the get of the global variable or the default value. I'm using the ternary operator here. And then I just return result. So those two functions are generally all I need to store my numeric values from my expert advisors to be safe in case of restart and then I can restore all of the information that I may have been tracking. So let's just see how I would use all of that. So here in a script, I'm simulating what might happen inside an expert advisor. I'm setting an account number, which you would typically pull from your actual account number, uh, just setting a symbol and a magic number. And then I'm saying I might want to store the last open price. So if the last open price was 1.2345 and my delimiter I'm going to use as an underscore. So I've shown two examples of how to set the master key. I can either set the master key by calling integer to string for the account number, adding the delimiter, symbol delimiter, and then magic number, or I can use the string concatenate function uh, with again, account number, delimiter, symbol, delimiter, and magic number. So that sets my master key, which is the sort of thing I said you would do that once during your expert advisor and just hold on to that master key to pass into the function each time. Uh, then the time set, I'm calling the set global variable. Remember that returns the date and time that the global variable was updated. Just the four arguments, master key, key, value, and delimiter. And then my value returned, I'm just calling the get function here, the same arguments, master key, key, zero, and delimiter. And then just to show that I've been able to store and retrieve it, that's why I've used different values. I've got the value as being passed in and value returned coming back. And then I've just got a print statement here where I'm going to show both of those. So I will run that and we'll see the results in the MetaTrader terminal. And here in the terminal, you can see master key one, two, three, four, five, six, underscore Euro USD underscore nine, eight, seven, six. So that's the master key that I set. My key is last open price. I'm setting the value as 1.2345 and the return value is 1.2345. And if I go to tools, global variables, there is my global variable with the value set. So that's my quick overview of a very simple and inbuilt mechanism for storing information in your expert advisor so that it's there during a restart and you don't have to lose any tracking information you have. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of these quick tips videos, then remember to subscribe. And if you click the bell icon, then you'll be notified when new videos come out. So until the next time, thank you for watching.